What's up guys? Today let's talk about radioactive isotopes. So isotopes, we've said before, they're just atoms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons. Simple, right? What makes them radioactive though? Radioactive isotopes are isotopes whose nuclei are unstable, so they give off radiation to make themselves more stable. Now, radiation itself has really bad rep, right? In movies, radiation always causes things like mutations, or you get superpowers, right? Well, radiation, in the scientific sense, is really just some sort of particle that's flying off that might be ionizing. So it's not too hard. So one example of a radioactive isotope is carbon-14. Carbon-14. Now, why am I writing like this? Well, carbon, the symbol for carbon is C, and carbon has six protons down here, and it has, let's see, eight neutrons, because up here denotes the atomic mass, and down here is the atomic number. So six protons and 14 total mass must mean 14 minus six, eight neutrons, right? The biggest number is always on top. Think about wrestling, right? In wrestling, the big guy is always on top. So, similar here, the big number is always on top. 14, 6, C, this is carbon-14. Carbon-14 is radioactive, okay? When it's radioactive, it has to decay in some way. It has to emit some sort of particle. Scientists have discovered that carbon-14 decays through something called beta minus decay. You guys don't worry about that, you don't know about that. But essentially, this carbon atom is actually converted into a nitrogen atom, releasing something called a beta particle. I mean, this is really just an electron, right? And if you want to be uh, complete about it, you can also say that it releases an antineutrino, specifically the electron antineutrino, to preserve the electron number. So we see that this carbon-14 is decaying into nitrogen and releasing an electron as a result. So, what is the purpose of this? Well, let me first introduce you to you guys the concept of a half-life. So, let's assume that you're some immortal being, all right, and you have 10 grams of carbon-14 just lying around, you know, because that's what you do. And then you're sitting around, and you're immortal, you know, you can binge watch all the Netflix TV shows if you want, and you sit there for 5,730 years. It's a lot of TV shows. But you come back to your sample, and after that time, you realize that you've got five grams of carbon-14 left. You do the same thing. You wait another 5,730 years. You're a patient, immortal being, and then you realize that you only have 2.5 grams left. What is happening here is you can see that this carbon is decaying because it's losing mass in the form of nitrogen gas. It's releasing it off, right? So, we see that it always decreases by one half, which is why we call this number 5,730 years. That is the half-life of carbon-14. Now, different radioactive isotopes have different half-lives, so this is a characteristic number for carbon-14. It's almost as if Thanos snaps his hands every 5,730 years, right? So that's the half-life. It's how long it takes for a radioactive isotope to decay into one half, for half of the sample to decay, all right? Now, what is this useful for, especially in the context of things like biology, right? Well, these radioactive isotopes can be used to cure and diagnose diseases. So, uh, you have this thing called your thyroid. In your neck, right, in your neck region, and the thyroid does a really good job of concentrating something called iodine. It's, like it's got the formula I2. So what scientists can do if they suspect that you have some sort of problem with your thyroid, they can give you, they can administer to you, a radioactive form of iodine, iodine-131, I believe. And then the particles that they give off 
can be detected using some kind of medical device, and they can look at your thyroid and tell what's wrong with it, diagnose something. Now, radioactive isotopes can also be used to cure things like cancers, so things like leukemias, things like melanomas, breast cancers. Those are all targets of radioactive isotopes that doctors can use to treat you. Now, what else can we do with radioactive isotopes? You saw in the intro, right? The plant takes in mostly C12 carbon, through CO2, right, for their photosynthesis, but occasionally some C14 gets inside of them through that CO2, and that C14 is fixed through photosynthesis into other organic compounds, and then so that plant's got some radioactivity to it, and then some animals eat it, and then we eat those animals, or we might be eating the plants directly. So that radiation is actually transferred up the food chain, and then here's the big deal. Those plants are constantly taking in C14, right? But once they die, they stop taking it in. And let's say that the plant fossilizes. So that fossil will have some sample of C14 inside of it, and then that C14 will decay, right? Through this beta minus decay. And scientists can actually measure the ratio of C14 to other carbon isotopes to determine the age of that fossil to determine when that fossil actually died. That's amazing. It's got applications in paleontology too. And the same can be applied to animals as well, because animals eat those plants and then they die and they can still have that carbon-14 inside their tissues. What else can we do? Well, radioactive isotopes, uh, so for example, carbon-14, we can actually look at biochemical pathways using radioactive isotopes. So we can look at which carbon goes where inside a certain mechanism by measuring the radiation levels of that particular compound. And we can see how these different pathways connect to each other. So for example, the Calvin cycle was originally discovered using these radioactive uh, procedures. And also DNA, right? The genetic material of all life. The DNA, the fact that DNA is the genetic material, that was established through radioactive isotopes. Search up the Hershey and Chase experiment. It's awesome. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys found this exciting and helpful. If you guys have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. I'll see you next time.